Hello dear friends, welcome back to High Point again. We were doing about historicism, new historicism in the playlist in the lecture series of literary theory and criticism. This is the last person, this is the last thinker uh, in which in new historicism uh, that we are doing today. Uh, we, are, we will learn about Jerome Mac. Can, okay Jerome McCann and about his major concepts theories and text we will discuss in a brief manner because there is no need that you go in detail about Jerome McCann but if you want to have a detailed lecture series of various literary theories and criticism then obviously you can visit my website and you can be a part of our family as a student if you are interested to have the entire materials then you can subscribe to the course and also enjoy various facilities that we are providing for our uh, students as well okay go and visit my website and let me know your impressions if you are studying on your own this will guide you uh, to what you have to learn one by one in a chronological manner okay there are a lot of things that we are doing for our students if you want to know you can use this whatsapp number in order to contact me and also use instagram page as well and also follow me on instagram and subscribe to my youtube channel if you are interested to have more contents related to nta ugc net jrf english language literature paper to moving on about jerome mcgann jerome John McGann is an American academic and textual scholar. Okay, he is an American. That means he is related to cultural materialism. McGann is an American academic and textual scholar whose work focuses on the history of literature. So this is one of his major area, history of literature and culture from the late 18th century. Late 18th century, that is his major focused. Uh, age then history of literature culture that is his major area McGann currently teaches at University of Virginia where he arrived after leaving uh, Caltech okay Jerome McGann is a member of the American Academy of Arts and Science and he has received honorary doctoral degrees from University of Chicago and University of Athens so do you remember these uh, things about him now Let's see his major concept. So you have to remember McCann as an eminent living uh, theoretician of new historicism or cultural materialism. Okay, McCann historically based critical procedure represents one of the most comprehensive and philosophisticated and sophisticated efforts in academic literary criticism to reverse the dehistorizing and depoliticizing tendencies not only in new critical close reading but also in structuralist and post structuralist textualization so this is his major contribution McGann's historically based critical procedure so he actually focuses on more historical details whenever he look at any other kind of works Okay, not only history, not only literature, but any other kind of literary or non-literary text. He basically do a historically based critical procedure. So this represents, this procedure of McGann represents one of the most comprehensive and sophisticated efforts in academic literary criticism to reverse. So it's an effort when he reads in a such a way that is uh, he, McGann, some an effort in academic literary criticisms to reverse the dehistoricizing. So he is historicizing, politicizing the tendencies, the literary criticism tendencies nowadays happening. So it's go it's happening at dehistoricizing and depoliticizing tendencies. Not only a new critical close reading, but also in structuralist and post structuralist textualization. So Dehistoricizing and depoliticizing tendencies happening in structuralist, post structuralist, or any other type of reading methods, he is reversing it and re, you know reversing it into his uh, historically based critical procedure. So, using his historically based critical procedure, the goal is not to reject wholesale these heterogeneous developments but rather to incorporate them so when i was teaching you or when we were discussing and learning about new historicism it's a kind of thick reading okay or thick documenting or thick description you must be aware um, you know you must be familiar with this uh, term thick description so when he is reversing the dehistoricizing and depoliticizing tendencies in literary criticism, he is not rejecting the new tendencies. He is not rejecting these heterogeneous developments or various kinds of developments happening in literary criticism. But actually, he wanted to incorporate them. 
were possibly into a historical program that would radically alter the practice of literary criticism by redressing the current schemes between textual and biographical scholarship investigations of the history of the text and the reception of the work and literary criticism that is interpretation okay actually he is not he is not telling that you have to you know avoid or reject the heterogeneous development different kinds of developments happened in literary theory and criticism but he wanted to use them incorporate them into a historical program into a historical that actually is going to radically fundamentally alter the practice of literary criticism by redressing the current schemes between uh, textual and biographic scholarship so what is the uh, you know what is the relationship between textual and biographical scholarship who wrote this text you know new criticism and all say, says that there is no need that you look at these things okay the uh, biographical uh, details you need not to look at the historical context you know but it, it is not like that okay the relationship between a text and its biographical details the historical uh, you know with the historical uh, things we have to study about that we have to use different kind of literary theory and criticism in order to uh, you know understand all these things so in order to understand these details and relationships in a better way we can use we can to accept and incorporate all these different type of developments mckay never says that we have to reject these kind of developments okay so it will incorporate these new developments will be in incorporated in investigating history of the text and reception of the work and also literary criticism that means interpretation that's what he says for mckan textual and biographic research is not a preliminary and incidental to the interpretation of literary work it is basic part of the interpretative work so it is not just an accidental work that we are doing when we research upon a work see doing the textual and biographical research the historical research the you know checking upon the historical background looking for historical evidences or cultural evidences this is not just a preliminary thing before going into the text you have to do some preliminary work of checking the biographical research uh, you know doing some biographical research historical research or textual research about this text it is just not a preliminary work or incidental or accidental thing that you have to do when you are going to research upon a text but it's a fundamental or a basic part of the interpretative act if you are going to interpret a text this is going to be a fundamental thing that you look at the text in a historical way or every other possible theory that you use in order to understand the historical background that is their function is not simply textual amendation but more importantly establishing the significance of the context of publication so it's not just you know you understand some historical facts from or textual fra facts from the text but it actually you are going to understand the significance of text or context of publication as mccann repeatedly shows the same text has different meaning is a different poem depending on where and when it appears okay so text has many number of n number of meanings according to where and when it appears so like i said in the previous videos if you have listened i'll you know say that point again so take any novel if it is written in a different era it will be different if it is written by a different author then that will be also different it's not possible that you uh, write the same story in a same way by by a different person even if i know the story when i write it the story will be different the meaning that we get out of that text will be different that's how translation is a you know we cannot exactly reproduce the text in a different language when you translate a text into a different language the story Uh, you know maybe you will feel similarity but the meaning when we read that text will will be you know will change It's, it won't be the same the experience of reading will be changing because it is appearing in a different situation it is appearing in a different era different it is appearing before different people it is not uh, appearing uh, when you translate a work i'm saying it is appearing before different different people so when we read uh, shakespeare's play now 
the readers are different and shakespeare wrote it in the renaissance age and suppose shakespeare lived in some other age the what the place that produced by him will be or would be different that's for sure so depending upon where and when it appears the age and how who has written them then it actually has a great influence upon a text so according to all these factors the text will be different so the same text will have different meanings if different people from different background different times uh, read them okay so this is what it is saying so it's not that textual reading or uh, background reading biographical research or textual historical details or the history of the text or the historical factors in which the text was produced or the historical background in which the text was written by the author or the uh, era in which the author is belonging all these things are important this is these are these researches are these studies done by a this type of studies done about a text is not just a preliminary research or not an incidental or accidental research but a basic part of interpretation okay so these are some of the major uh, you know there are various concepts i just speak to some important concept that you have to understand as well as from the point of view of new historicism now let's see his major text culture and language at crossed purposes the unsettled records of american settlement published in 2022 byron and the poetics of adversity in 22 again 2022 children's hours of a certain age to 2020 then the poet edgar allan poe published in 2014 then comes read into textuality in uh, 2004 byron and romanticism in 2002 then dante gabriel rossetti and the game that must be lost published in 2000 then poetics of sensibility in the year 1998 and black riders in 1993 a critic of modern textual criticism in 1992 the textual condition in 1991 the beauty of inflections in 1988 social values and poetic uh, acts in 1988 the romantic ideology in 1980 Three. You can always pause the video and read the titles two three times so that you remember them. Okay, so that's all about Jerome McCann. I hope the ideas discussed in here are clear to you. If you have any doubts, you can contact me through this WhatsApp number or through Instagram or through the comment session too. You can show your comments, your impressions, your doubts and queries and questions. Okay, and don't forget to visit my website. You know that will benefit you. Uh, that will guide you um, about whatever you have to finish for NTU UGC Net Zero of English Language and Literature. Okay, meet you in the next video session. Thank you for watching this video. Ta ta. Bye bye.